<laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Rachel's studio. And just in case I forget to mention it, Sadie wanted me to let y'all know she is not always looking this grumpy. So don't think that this is the real Sadie. But anyway, in today's video, I'm going to share five tips with how to paint this dreamy, spooktacular moon, and I'll also throw in plenty of bonus tips. Be sure to watch until the very end because I'll include a super bonus tip that you will not want to miss, so let's go ahead and get started. The first tip that I want to share with you all is use the right materials to get these dreamy effects. Not all paint colors will create these dreamy effects that I'm going to show you how to create. And I used a special mix that I call synthetic black. I actually don't call it that. Handprint.com calls it his synthetic black mix. And he came up with this mix of three colors to create a especially luminous looking black that doesn't have a big drying shift. What is a drying shift? It's how much your paint grays down and lightens as it dries. And watercolors are notorious for graying down and also for lightening up as they dry. So he put together this mix of three paint colors that do not have a very big drying shift, but they also remain quite luminous when you mix them together, meaning that they look transparent and they get really dark. And the three colors are M. Graham, Fallow Green, Daniel Smith, Permanent Brown, and Daniel Smith, Inden Throne. Now these are all new colors to me and what I do with my students is every quarter of the year I send out paint dots. So I have to come up with new paint colors to try out. And so I chose the three colors in this synthetic black mix that handprint.com came up with. So that is how I came upon this really cool mix and I really like it. And one of the things that I like most about this mix is not how dark it gets, not how translucent and beautiful it looks, it's how much it cauliflowers. The blue that I always use, ultramarine blue, I love it. It's my friend, I will never leave ultramarine blue, but ultramarine blue is granulating, which is beautiful, but when you're trying to make these really dreamy effects where you're seeing these cauliflowers and blooms, ultramarine blue doesn't do that. It doesn't cauliflower very easily, but end and throne blue cauliflowers beautifully. This whole mix cauliflowers differently. So it is key to use colors that you know will cauliflower well. I have found that the fallow blues really cauliflower well, and this end and throne blue cauliflowers really well. And Daniel Smith Lamp Black has some interesting cauliflowering effects too. If you have watched my other videos, I have talked a lot about the special paint qualities of Daniel Smith Lamp Black. So I will link a video here. It was one of my hack videos where I shared the, the beauty and the joy of using Daniel Smith Lamp Black. So Again, this tip is all about using the right supplies, using the right paint colors, but also that means you have to use good watercolor paper. You will not be able to get these effects without using good watercolor paper. I'm using cold press Arsh 140 pound in this painting. You can also use any other 100% cotton 140 pound or heavier cold press paper to get these really beautiful atmospheric and cauliflower effects. All right, my next tip is actually a bonus tip. I've always supposed to have five tips, but I'm thinking of so many great tips that I really, really wanna share with you all. And the next tip that I wanna share is use salt for some of these harsher effects that you see. They look like little harsh cauliflowers. That is actually salt. And you can decide what kind of effects you want. If you want bigger uh, salt effects with a bigger cauliflower, use kosher salt. If you want smaller effects like what I have here, they almost look like snowflakes, then use um, more the finer grained table salt. And you don't want to use too much salt, just like 20 grains, and you don't want to put it on when the paper is too wet. You want to wait till your paper's buckling. Then you put the salt on, and then you will get these atmospheric effects that I got here. And I actually did two stages of salt. I did it when it was wet buckling, and then I did it when it was kind of damp buckling to get two different um, levels of 
texture from salt. And the drier the paper, the harsher the edges will be created in the little snowflake-like marks from the salt. All right, tip number two is to splatter water to get these cauliflower effects. But you can't splatter water just at any time. Oh no, you have to wait until your paper is at the buckling stage. If you don't know what I mean by the buckling stage, you can look at my paper in this image here and you can see that it's making little waves because the water is soaking into the paper. It's making the paper buckle, have those little hills and valleys in it. And in one of my last first series videos, I went into depth about all the different levels of paper moisture. So be sure to check that out to understand all the different things you can do at each different stage of moisture level in your paper. It's really key to understand how to, um, when you want to master watercolor, it's really important to master all these different levels of paper moisture and know what you can do at each phase. So during the buckling phase, you can make cauliflowers and it can look really atmospheric like what I'm doing here in this moon painting. And not only do you want to wait till the buckling stage, but for this moon in particular, I splattered water on this moon while it was really wet buckling and then I let it dry some more and splattered more water for sharper looking cauliflower. So I got a variety of cauliflower effects by splatting water dripping water at different stages of the buckling paper moisture level. Another technique that I used to get these beautiful effects on the moon is use my push technique. And it, the push technique is very similar to the cauliflower. It's basically using the same properties of watercolor's ability to cauliflower. But I call it my push technique because it's a little different because what I do is I very specifically take a paintbrush that has a little half drop of water in the tip and I place it strategically in a lighter area of the painting where there's less pigment but there's pigment surrounding it and so the water drops onto the paper and then it spreads out across the paper and as it spreads out across the paper it pushes into the darker paint and makes these bigger cauliflower effects. And so I also did that. I splatted water, like I just talked about, but I also dropped larger drops of water in very specific areas to push into the dark paint away from lighter areas. So that's my push technique, and be sure to watch my push technique video if you haven't seen it. I will link it here. And just know that when you click on these videos that I suggest to you, it will not take you out of this video. It will just allow you to put it in a queue so you can watch it after you're done watching this video. Another suggestion that I have, tip number four for painting your moon is when you're painting around the outside of the moon, don't dab at the edges. You want to take a, as big a brush as you can use. I could have used a bigger brush than this. This is a three quarter oval silver black velvet. Silver black velvets are my favorite brushes. This is my biggest silver black velvet I have. I need to get a bigger one if I painted this large format, which is a 14 inch format. By the way, that is a bonus tip I just thought of that I'm gonna throw in here for free for you guys. When you're wanting to get these big atmospheric effects with uh, the push technique and splatter and cauliflower, paint in a larger format. I painted this as an eight by 10. I did several studies and I could not get as dramatic a cauliflower effects and push technique because the paint needs room to move. It needs room to spread out and do these beautiful effects. So paint in a larger format. This 14 inch by 14 inch painting to me was the perfect size for this moon. It gave the paint and the water plenty of room to dance. Give your watercolor room to dance when you use these techniques. So there you go, a little bonus sub tip. But anyway, when you're painting along, around the edge of the outside of your moon. Don't dab at it. Like I was saying, use a bigger brush and pull your brush around the edge. I actually moved my entire body as I moved around, uh, moved my brush along the edge of this moon so that I made a really smooth line around the edge of the moon and it kept it nice and round and smooth. So that's tip number four. 
And by the way, did you catch that other little bonus tip I used is when you're painting around your moon, use as large of a brush as you can. All right, my next tip, my next official tip is to make your moon appear to be glowing by painting a gradient. What do I mean by gradient? That means the sky closest to your moon is painted with more watery paint and the paint dries lighter. And then as you get farther and farther away from the moon, you want to get your sky darker and darker and darker to make it look like the moon is glowing. So as you move away from the moon, use thicker and thicker paint on wet paper. You have to have all the paper wet. You don't wanna paint onto dry paper. So I pre-wet the paper. Then next to the moon, I paint in about uh, milk consistency paint. And then I move out a ring or so and paint with thicker milk consistency and then another ring further out of paint will be watery cream consistency then cream consistency and then in the very corners I painted with very thick cream consistency Daniel Smith lamp black in the corners to get it super dark to create that gradient which makes the moon look like it's glowing into the night sky. All right are you all ready for the piece de resistance? tip that I have for you all. When you're painting watercolor uh, and you're using a lot of water, a lot of times you'll get these hard edges, but I wanted my moon to look really soft, like it was glowing softly into the night. So I pulled out my little handy dandy size two Royal and Langnickel scrubber brush. And this is basically a stiff brush. It's made for watercolor. It's called a scrubber. I talked about it in my I've talked about it in several videos. I have a video about just the scrubber. I have another more recent video about five watercolor brushes you may never have heard of so be sure to check that one out too. I will link that one here but you can just search my channel for scrubber and you'll find the video just about scrubber. But what I do is I dip my scrubber in clear water and then I just scrub along the edge of the moon to get rid of that little harsh edge just to make it that much softer and smoother and dreamy looking. So that is my final bonus tip for you all for creating this dreamy, beautiful moon. All right, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful and be sure to subscribe. I upload a new video every week. If you want to learn from me more in depth, go check out my Patreon and I will see you guys next week. Okay. Thanks so much, you guys. Bye. Ow. <laughs> I love you though, kitty. Don't bite my toe, kitty. Bye, you guys.